All right, folks, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the Sooners. We've got Jason Ray on the line from last word on college football. We're talking schedule and uh, will it be another year of dominance for Oklahoma in the Big 12? Of course, getting back to the college football playoff last year. I uh, want to remind you that uh, you can grab the description link down below next to the hashtag Sam Strong. Uh, if you'd like to put a couple bucks of wagers on the games, this way you get an additional 50% added to your account. If you go to that link and use the promo code MRTBCFB, and also keep in mind, uh, in addition to the 50%, you're helping a very worthy cause. You see the hashtag Sam Strong. You can look into that. And we've talked about that in other videos. Uh, Jason Ray, last word on college football, talking up the Sooner schedule with an interesting date to start the season, Jason, of course, with uh, Oklahoma taking on Houston, a team that they've battled in the past, uh, gave them an early season loss just a few years ago uh, when they still went to the um, – Big 12 championship and won it. Uh, your thoughts about the big Sunday affair against the Houston uh, Cougars uh, as we outline uh, the start of this stretch run for Oklahoma? Yeah, Mark, as you mentioned, is it's an interesting start to the season. Oklahoma has not actually played a Sunday regular season game in the history of the program. So certainly there, there's a lot of excitement for that uh, for that game. And it's like you said, Oklahoma did lose to the start of the season at Reliance Stadium, I believe, in 2016. And they lost that game 33 to 23, um, you know, against Houston. And I think that that was actually Baker Mayfield's second year. Um at Oklahoma, so so two certainly two programs that are familiar with one another, um, two coaches that are familiar with one another, with Dana Holgerson going over from West Virginia to uh, to Houston um, uh, in the off season, and a little bit of a, a little bit of a surprise move, and you know he gets to you know he gets to start his season with um, with Oklahoma. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of excitement. First game of the year, there's certainly a lot of excitement everywhere across the country, but. You know, certainly with um, with Jalen Hurts coming in, and then with the with Alex Grinch and the uncertainty on the defensive side of the ball, a lot of anxiousness, excitement um, will come in. Um, Oklahoma is going to get tested very quickly um, with that Houston offense, one of the one of the better offenses of the country, certainly in a um, non Power Five school, but you know, one of the best offenses you, you know that you'll that you'll see. And a lot of people don't know from a quarterback perspective, Derek King. Um, 36 touchdowns, only six interceptions, completed over 63% of his passes, I believe, a year ago. Um, had another 14 on the ground, so you know, single-handedly accounted for 50 touchdowns. So he's going to stress that defense um, early, early and often. Um, you know, in Norman, just to see, you know, see where they're at. I mean, it's a good, um, it's certainly a good barometer uh, to look uh, at, look at where the, where they're at defensively. You know, it was something that you thought you would see last year with Florida Atlantic and. Certainly, Florida Atlantic wasn't quite the same team last year as they were the previous year, um, but this this feels a little bit different. I mean, I think y- you certainly would expect Houston to put up some points here. Um, wouldn't be surprised at all to see a, a fifty, you know, like a fifty-one thirty-seven type of game. Um, I, it it will be. I, I don't think you know Houston did lose um, really their only you know good defensive player um, at Oliver last year. Um, probably one of the best players in the history of the program so I believe they they averaged uh, they gave up about 37 points a game on defense so um, only returning about five or six starters from from that from that defensive side of the ball as well so um, points will probably um, probably happen very very um, often um, through throughout that game It'll, it, like I said a good test um, certainly on both sides of the ball but particularly um, the, the Houston Cougars offense will will stress that young and experienced Oklahoma defense. September 7th brings South Dakota to town. And then an interesting date out at UCLA. Um, College football fans would hope that the Bruins program under Chip Kelly would be in better shape than it appears to be right now coming off three and nine, although they had a much better November than they played uh, during the course of the regular season, uh, September and October. Uh, Still probably nothing close to being able to challenge uh, Oklahoma, but still a road date against a a Pac-12 team that's got some talent and and should be much improved this year. So uh, always uh, a fascinating setting and a picturesque setting going to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, absolutely. I think that just the setting itself probably brings a whole lot of heartache to, you know, Oklahoma Sooner fans as they, 
Um, the last time they were on that field was against certainly was against Georgia in the Rose Bowl. But yeah, I mean, I think you know UCLA is one of the youngest teams in the in the country. I believe they have something around ten or eighteen or nineteen starters returning um, from that team, um, loaded with freshmen and sophomores a year ago. So, I think the mindset of that game will be will be interesting, Mark, to see to see how UCLA comes out of the gate. They start they they go to Cincinnati for the opening weekend of the year, then they host San Diego State. You know, if they win those two games, you know, with a young team, confidence will be high. You know, Oklahoma could have a certainly could have a battle on their hands. However, you know, if they lose, if they lose those first two games, you know, as the way youngsters are, they could they could get down um, in a hurry. But you would you would expect um, a decent amount of improvement from year one uh, to year two, as you mentioned with 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 Chip Kelly. He's not really where they where they would like to be yet. But you know, Oklahoma can you know Oklahoma can certainly attest of. of of new coaches going from year one to year two, certainly with Bob Stoops um, coming in and, and the first year having a seven and five, just kind of an average season for Oklahoma, then obviously winning the national championship the, the next year. So um, a couple of interesting players, very young players, uh, um, you know, from, from the UCLA perspective, Joshua Kelly, I think he was one of the better running backs in the country the last part of the year. Um, I know that he was a little banged up in, in fall practice from what I heard from our um, from, from Tony Siracusa, who obviously does a great job in covering UCLA. Um, so he's he's going to be one of the most important players to that team um, as well, um, as well as just kind of getting get, just getting that youth more, more experience. Yeah, they're in a situation at UCLA where uh, if they can pound uh, Josh Kelly at a defense that's been uh, certainly uh, susceptible to uh, either getting beat beat up or hit for big plays downfield, then maybe it becomes a, a more of a three quarter, four quarter affair than it was right. last year, and it's a little bit more interesting with that test on the road. So the first open date comes after the face, first uh, road trip of the season, and then you go into Big Twelve play, and uh, that's the rest of the slate. Uh, Texas Tech at home, a trip to Kansas, and then the annual affair with Texas in Dallas, West Virginia. Uh, just kind of go through the rest of the Big 12 slate. Uh, I certainly see a couple of stretch runs here, a couple of stretches of games, I should say, that uh, stand out to me. But uh, what, what do you see here, Jason? Yeah, I think as we, you know, as you progressively go down the schedule, as you mentioned, Mark, Texas Tech after the bye week, that 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 will be certainly an interesting game just to see what Matt Wells brings to the table and, and it's kind of changing that culture. And Lubbock, you know, I would expect – let more of a kind of a balanced team coming to Norman. Still, they're probably not. Alan Bowman is probably one of the best, better quarterbacks in the top, certainly in the top five um, of quarterbacks in the, in the big 12. Um, and then certainly the next week as they travel to Kansas, um, that's about as big of a trap game as you can expect. Um, sandwich sandwich in between right before the uh, red river shootout. And um, in that game, I mean, if if not for anything else, interesting to see what kind to, what what uh, Les Miles brings to the table as he comes back to the Big Twelve. Um, you know, just hitting on a couple more throughout the throughout the season. You know, certainly as you as you look at um, Texas and the River, Red River Shootout, that's going to be the biggest game of the year. You know, maybe not necessarily the most important, but certainly the biggest game of the year, depending on how that second week. Um, goes with with Texas when they host LSU. It certainly could be a battle of undefeateds. It could be a top five matchup um in that game. You know, one thing one one sneaky game down the stretch that um you know they host Iowa State. Iowa State beat them a couple of years ago, obviously in Norman. Um one one thing that's a little bit un, probably undervalued is the road game at Baylor. Um you know Baylor has 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 gotten um you know, definitely gotten better in the first two years of Matt Rule. Obviously, a couple of years ago had that one and eleven, um, one eleven um, record, and then you know, most notably they they lost to Liberty at home. But you know, last year they went seven and six, got back to a bowl game. Um, they got some good players. Certainly got some good players on the offensive side of the ball. Um, Charlie Brewer, Denzel Mims um, at the wide receiver position. Of course, they lose Jalen Hurd, the transfer from Tennessee um, that came in and played wide receiver last year. But, you know, Oklahoma hasn't historically played well um, in Waco. So I think that would that one's a little bit of a sneaky road game um, that that would that I would kind of would bring. I think it could end up being their, their toughest true road game of the year. And then obviously the final game of the year as they they travel to Stillwater, you know, 
will be certainly will be a lot on the line, perhaps for both teams. Not sure what um, you know. Oklahoma State is in most predictions are kind of the the middle to the lower half of the of the Big Twelve, but um, certainly would love to play spoiler. And you know, you you would think that Oklahoma has at least a at the very least, a Big 12 championship berth on the line in that game and possibly a, a playoff berth um, as well, kind of riding on that game uh, and that game. Um, you know, the only other one, Mar- one of the other ones, you know, I, I, kind of, I tend to look at road games, as opposed, especially as you get into October, November, um, as opposed to some of the, some of the home games. Um, you know, Kansas State, it's a little bit of an anomaly this year. You know, they, they've, they've probably never had a good team um, certainly in, in history, maybe not even the history of their program, but not for a long time, not coached by Bill Snyder. So we'll be interesting to see, um, to see how, how they, how they, um, look this year. Um, but yeah, I, if I, you know, probably the, the Baylor game and the, um, Oklahoma state game, the Bedlam matchup were the, were the two true road games aside from the red river shootout that could potentially give them some problems. Yeah, following the uh, retirement announcement of Bill Snyder, we did a breakdown of Kansas State's program through history with and without Bill Snyder. And if somebody wants to see, um, it's got to be the starkest contrast of any program in the history of college football. It, it's I don't believe it's close. Uh, every program that has success has had success under multiple coaches. Any program that you find out there, they are the exception. Uh, top 10 ranked team, a number of times under him going to major bowl games, vying for big 12 championships on a regular basis. Even after he came back the second time, not necessarily quite the success, but still close to top 25 type teams. Uh, other than that, they've been a wasteland, you know, one and two wins a year for most of their history. Uh, it's incredible to see that the contrast there. Um, certainly when I look at two stretches of the season, The one that stands out is obviously the game as it stands alone by itself is the Texas game. Most people anticipate that being the game um, that will be a repeat uh, game in the Big 12 championship game as it was last year. Uh, I think Iowa State and TCU may have something to say about that, but Texas and Oklahoma appear to be the two best teams with OU the decided uh, favorite at this point. Normally, West Virginia, the last couple of years, that would have been a challenge coming off the Texas game, but the Mountaineers appear to be down this year. We shall see. Uh, And then, as you mentioned, after the November 2nd open date, the stretch run has four games in which Oklahoma is going to be a decided favorite, most likely unless things change drastically between now and then. But the Sooners will be a decided favorite in those four games, but none of them are layups by any stretch. Uh, As you mentioned, uh, Iowa State's at home, but they were able to pull the trick against Baker and company two years ago in Norman. The trip to Baylor, the trip to Oklahoma State, we know what happened with the game against the Cowboys last year, 48-47 down to the wire, failed two-point conversion. And TCU, if they select a quarterback, which of course they will, but if they select the right one and he's got about 11 games under his belt at that point, I think the rest of the team is really good. Yeah. They're one big question mark. So TCU could be a difficult out as well in game 11. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's, um, you know, aside from Jalen Hurts, one of the most interesting graduate transfers um, in, in, in the Big 12 was Alex Delton going over from Kansas State to uh, to, to TCU. Um, you know, does have some experience. I'm not sure if that's, you know, to your point, Mark, I'm not sure if that's the guy that Patterson will go, will certainly go with. But at that point, he will have a lot of, um, uh, certainly will have a lot of experience in, in, in their system. Um you know, under their belt, you know, almost every year, Oklahoma tends to lose a game that they shouldn't. Right. You know, you have um, maybe not necessarily last year with Texas. They obviously were pretty equally matched, but you know, the previous year they lost to, uh, they lost to Iowa state. You know, if if they're, if they're going to trip up in in one of these games, you, you almost think it's going to be one that maybe, maybe they're not necessarily heavily favorites, but they are, you know, pretty substantial favorites on, and they let their guard down a little bit. Um, you know they they haven't they haven't historically you know the last five six years they haven't played well in the Cotton Bowl against Texas you know they obviously certainly lost last year and, and they've won a couple of times but um, but they they haven't played well um, in that game you, but you, you you have to expect that they'll certainly be ready um, you know next year for yeah this year for for, for that game um, yeah I mean I think you know if I had to 
you know, if I had to pinpoint a loss, you know, that you probably don't see, um, I would probably agree with you coming from a TCU and Iowa State perspective. Um, the one thing that you can certainly bank on with, with both Iowa State and TCU is, number one, they're going to be very, very well, extremely coached, extremely well coached. Um, you know, Matt Campbell is probably one of, he's one of the best, you know, up and coming um, coaches in the country. You got to think he probably won't be at Iowa State for the long haul. Um, but and then Gary Patterson, certainly one, certainly probably the best defensive coach in the country, defensive head coaches in the country. They've consistently been the best um, defensive team in the Big 12, even last year when they had a little bit of a dip just overall. Um, they still only allow, the, I believe, around 23 points a game, um, which is which is outstanding in the Big 12. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, we, you, you, you you look at these games in August, you know, it's certainly hard to predict what predict what's going to happen in, in certainly November. But, um, you know, that the TCU game and certainly the Baylor game looks like two um, that, that could uh, potentially cause some problems for them. Jason Ray, last word on college football, helping us break down the Oklahoma schedule. And again, highlighted by that Sunday night affair to kick off the season against Houston should be an interesting matchup against the Cougars. UCLA, could it be a challenge? Yes, it could be a blowout, but it's uh, going to be at the Rose Bowl and should be an interesting affair between uh, two brand names, at least in college football. We'll see if the Bruins are up to the challenge. And of course, the date against Texas, which could determine seeding at the Big 12 championship game, or it could knock one <laughs> out uh, if uh, Oklahoma or Texas finds another loss in the schedule. And again, there's just a slew of teams that will be decided underdogs against the Sooners, but certainly are capable on a given day of upsetting Oklahoma, including Iowa State, TCU, and Baylor, and Oklahoma State as well. Yeah. Jason, we appreciate you stopping by to break down the Sooners. All right. Thanks for having me on, Mark.